All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today. Nothing is into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. We hope that you enjoy. Enjoy. enjoy, enjoy. Welcome to episode 316 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill, admin on the KISS FAQ message board. Today I'm joined by a man on his microphone, Daniel Weez. Yeah, hello. Yeah, no, no technical issues this time, thank goodness. Hopefully not. No, excellent. Uh, from the Great White North, a man and his dog. And she has a name, and you don't, shouldn't Jackie. call her my, yeah, you shouldn't call her my dog. She's Jackie. Uh, Marcus yes. Almighty Mark, of course, and the voice of reason, 69th Blizzard Ken. Hey, All right, here. gentlemen, good to reconvene. Uh, you got some mail today, didn't you, Mr. Ken? I did get some mail today. Uh, You're going to show us what what is it that you got? Okay. So, as you know, I ordered some, the Kiss vinyl, um, the double platinum, uh, both versions, uh, the limited and the the regular. Of course, they're both very similar. They're picture discs. So, I got it today. Uh, Here it is. It's it's pretty good. I don't know how much it was thrown around, but we'll see what happens. There's been some reports of damage we're crossing our fingers on what it looks like. Um, the other thing is they in this mailers, they're good mailers, but the thing is I don't think they're supposed to put two double albums in the mailer. Maybe two single albums, but not two double albums. So it, it, it makes it tight. So. Here it is here. Oh, and I see some double platinum here. And I think it survived. I think it survived. So this is the um, the limited, I think. Well, yeah, 500 units worldwide. Let me the picture this. It looks like nothing got smashed or anything. So it looks, looks in, you know, there we go. How's that? You're muted, Good you condition. Did. Yeah, uh, and Mark will like this little ding here. It's a little ding, but I'm not that picky about that kind of stuff. Um, I think there it is. Mark will like this. I think. I don't know if you can even see it. Uh, made in Canada, eh? It's, it's a made in Canada at the top of the. I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, it says made, made in Canada right here. Oh, nice. And you know, it's an interesting big barcode. That's a, that's a big barcode. So <laughs> yeah, I, so, so what I was so, saying when I was on mute was it looks like the USPS has not turned your beautiful double platinums into smashes, thrashes, and hits by mishandling them. Yeah, well. Dinging in the corners. It's funny. It, it went through uh, FedEx, <laughs> but then it did get to FedEx delivered it to the post office, who, which delivered it to me, you know. So that's that one, and then the other one is basically the same. Uh, I think it looks okay. It says picture disc edition. It's not the limited one. It's the other edition of it. It's very similar. Does it have a made in Canada? You know, I don't see a made in Canada on the back of that one. Do you think it's possible they were done at two different places? It's possible. Hecho yeah. and Mexico. Oh, no. No, it's, it's there. It's right there. Sorry. Oh, okay. Right there. There you go. Cool. Well, I'm glad yours arrived safely. And for those who are listening to this, these double platinums look just like the 1970s ones. Obviously, the LPs are different. So they're sold out now. So if you didn't get one or if you got one who's that was damaged, <laughs> you're pretty much SOL. <laughs> but you can buy them for $899 on eBay. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, uh, the other thing is, uh, I will post some pictures I'll, I'll, I'll open at least one of them i'll even try to play one and see how it sounds but uh i'll, I'll post some pictures uh, up on this wherever facebook is yep and i saw that with the uh ace fairly origins volume one picture disc that arrived uh last week that the shrink wrap was made in canada as well for that one so there, there you go um, I'm sure we'll, be playing, we'll be paying tariffs on those before long Press. because there's a lot of vinyl coming across from Canada, right, Mr. Project Gemini, who also yes, sir, 
exports a lot. All right, so let's get into some of the news topics. There's not a whole lot. Thanks uh, for showing us those, Ken, because I did not bother like ordering, that. so that's as close as I will get to one of those. Um, let's pimp Ages of Rock, the podcast. I was on the show this week uh, to talk about an album that I absolutely love, and that's very important to me in my musical story, and that is, well... British Steel, Judas Priest, and it's celebrating its 40th anniversary. So if you want to find out why it's important to me and what we all thought about it, go over and check out the Ages of Rock podcast. Dennis Allen and Bill are great guys, really fun to hang out with and also just to talk music with. Uh, Daniel, you sent me a link this week of uh, Aliona, I think her name is. She's a Russian girl with a great set of pipes, uh, but you sent me her cover of Who Wants to Be Lonely? which I thought was absolutely fantastic. Uh, if I remember, I'll post a link in it. Otherwise, you can use that Google machine and uh, check out A-L-Y-O-N-A, -A, Aliona. And she's also got, uh, done a cover of Reason to Live. And she's got a very, uh, well, it seemed a little bit heart, you know, uh, Ann Wilson-ish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, great cover of Carrie. And an absolutely stunning one of uh, Queens Who Wants to Live Forever and a bunch mm -hmm. of a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, worth checking out. Just fun. So thanks for the diversion. It certainly wasted an hour of my day listening to her and watching her videos today. So there you go. What are the news? U.S. tour. No one is mm -hmm. surprised. It's rescheduled to this time next year. So August and September of 2021, which I think puts that last show at, in New York City as not taking place next, uh, mm. when was yeah, it? Ju we July, I think was the July 17th. Yeah. So no shock, you know, let's be safe, let's be healthy, let's not kill the bands that we love. Um, what was that? Who was that band that was performing Smash Mouth, I think? Uh, oh, Mouth. yeah. Yeah, who no one cares if they get sick, I guess. Um, they, <laughs> they certainly don't care if their fans get sick, so it's a two-way yeah, street. There we go. Uh, Metallica is going to do a drive-in show at mm. like $895 a seat, I think, for your car. But you get four free downloads of S&M 2. Something stupid, but there you go. Um, Paul, Paul Stanley dug up his 1973 homemade glitter logo shirt and posted a picture of that on Twitter. Number one, that's crazy that he even still has it. Number two, it's very cool. Uh, people have said, well, why isn't Kiss making these? Because, yeah, that's the original design, the first Kiss, uh, which would be very cool. So he obviously kept a lot of things. But that's going to segue straight into today's topic, which is favorite costumes. So we've kind of um, split it up. Thank you, Mark. It looks like the glitter's coming off, just like the new Unmasked t-shirts. I saw people posing photos of those after they'd had one wash, and uh, basically they'd had technical issues with their washing. So mm -hmm. um, back to today's topic. Ken, I'm just going to quickly look at what you suggested this episode be called. Kiss 70s Costumes Ranked. Um, We've always talked about favorite costumes, favorite eras, favorite this and that. So we thought it'd be a good idea to actually put each one of the major revisions of the band members and their costumes through the little voting machine, not relying on the post, of course. Um, there, Then we get to see which is the board or this panel's favorite and least favorite of the costumes. I broke it down into... Well, basically the major ones. So starting with 1973-74, the Leather Road Warrior. Um, then for Ace, obviously in 74, he got that triangle top for a bit. And yes, there were modifications to each one of the members throughout the, the year as they changed their costumes around. But we're talking about the major revisions only. So 1975, Gene goes to Leather Stud. Then he goes to Armored Stud, Chain, Demon, and of course Disney for all of them. So... For each one of the members, we're going to um, basically just go through our rankings. So just as a quick overview, what is it that you like most about a costume and that kind of guided you on voting on each one of these? And I guess, start with Daniel. 
Uh, I'm not sure. Do you want me to start with a specific character or? Uh, no. What What is it that, just, that you just, like about costumes and that you don't like yeah, about costumes? In general, just Just in yeah. general, before we get yeah. into the individual ones. All right. Well, um, I guess uh, I like black. I like silver. I like studs. Uh, not too m much <clears throat> color, um, and also not too much Marvel. Going Marvel, uh, so so uh, chains are okay, silver, metal. So uh, I actually briefly looked at, uh, I think it was Ken's and Mark's list, and I uh, noticed I had a totally different opinion on on some of the costumes. So, so it will, will be kind of cool to hear what you all have to say uh, about your picks and choices. Yeah, as a fan who became a fan in 1985, I like fluorescent streamers, but unfortunately we're only talking about the original era of Kiss, <laughs> so I don't get to yeah. leopard print, uh, blue thongs. Leopard print is okay, but those Damn. asylum things, no. Blue mankinis, no. So uh, I'm with you, leather, basically. Black, leather, and silver are kind of the things that I've always liked. I always hate Vegasy things um, or over the top too much. So where something is nice and kind of understated or perfectly stated uh, works the best. Ken, what about you? Yeah, well, uh, you know, I saw it when I when I first got into them. I, you know, that was one of the things that you know you kind of like study. <laughs> I mean. Uh, I'd have the, the magazines and the stuff at the time and when I was first getting into them and looking at the pictures and like, oh, okay, this is interesting, this is costume, what does this mean, you know? And then you look back, maybe you see some older pictures and like, oh, okay, they, they obviously they've progressed from this to that and so on. And um, But the things that, you know, I like all of them in their own way. I mean, of course, they fit the time, but it's just an interesting progression from the beginning and how they changed. And I mean, the 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 superhero kind of stuff. I was kind of at the time. I was okay with it uh, because you know I was a big superhero fan. Uh, I you know I read Superman comic and Batman comics and other comics when I was when I was good. I was still reading them at that time. Um, so. Uh, yeah, I was into that. I thought I was, oh, this is kind of cool. He has a cape. That's kind of neat, you know, that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it kind of got a little bit Vegasy, I guess you could say. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I like all costumes pretty much. There's been a few mistakes through, you know, through the years, but uh, they're all good in their own way. Yeah, nice, Mark. How about you? Well, I, what I like about the costumes is that they very much represent a time period. And I think that's one of the things that I found very cool about the KISS costumes is that, you know, when you see a certain picture, you can say, oh, okay, that's from 76 or this is from 79. I mean, if you look at most bands, uh, photographs throughout the years, I mean, the only way you can tell what, what year or what, what album it could be is how young their face looks. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> some because sometimes you ha they don't have any kind of identifiable wear except, you know, maybe like this guy wore his favorite jeans all the time or something. I mean, the kiss has something so, <clears throat> excuse me, has something so specific. That's what I've always enjoyed about it. And uh, I, I also think that, uh, you know, it, it, to me, it always represented the seriousness of a band. I've always thought that a band that kind of took their stage gear into, you know, consideration are, are, is a band that wants to put on a, a, a proper show. I mean, Iron Maiden, for example, I know that they were usually wear more or less, you know, nothing too extraordinary as far as stage gear goes. But Steve Harris said that it was always uh, one of the things that he made sure with the band is that they never went on stage with the same clothes that they had, that they came in with, that they always went into a dressing room, brought some stage clothes and changed into it, whether it was spandex, whether it was jeans, whether they had their, you know, their wristbands and all that stuff. I mean, hey, that was a costume for them. And to me, it also shows a dedication to it because they didn't they didn't just want to go up like, you know, how people were dressing in the 90s, you know, the same clothes they were walking with 10 minutes ago, they're on stage with and playing, you know. So I think it's I think it's important, the costumes. Yeah, I think you made, you made a good point there. And an, an additional thing is that uh, by being so outlandish, it never gets old, sort of. 
I mean, yeah. the other bands from the 70s look plain silly, but with Kiss, the, the, right. they were so outlandish, so it's still kind of cool. It's like Superman. I mean, even though he has his boxers or, or his, what's it called, his <laughs> underwear. Jock strap. On to- yeah, jock, his jock, jockeys Bikini. or whatever it's called. Yeah, it still <laughs> works because it's so outlandish. So <laughs> the same goes with Kiss, I think. Um, but if you look at the other bands from the 70s, I mean, with uh, the sideburns and everything, it looks kind of crazy. Yeah, and and again, you show someone a picture of Kiss who doesn't know anything about Kiss, they wouldn't be able to tell you that that's the 1970s necessarily. So it does make it timeless <laughs> and, you know. All right, so let's start with Mr. Simmons. And uh, this one, I'm I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm not surprised about the least favorite. So um, in fifth place the 1979 i called it the disney vegas gargoyle look with five points um no shock i guess that that's the least favorite ken your thoughts yeah i I had a you know i kind of like that one but i I still ranked it you know i don't know if i ranked the last or the bottom uh, or close to the bottom um because uh i still yeah like Daniel, I like the silver and black. You don't need all the extra frills on it. It, it, a lot of those costumes worked well as they were, you know, designed. Um, Yeah, they just got a little extreme in the dynasty and unmasked era there. So it's, you know, it's, it's. I, I liked it okay. Again, at the time, it was. I thought it was very cool, but it's not as cool to me now as it was back then. Right, and uh, by the way, you ranked that the highest of the four of us everyone else had it dead last you had se- second to last so uh daniel. yeah i was close yeah it was almost mm-hmm. last but yeah daniel yeah i think it was a bit too much even though i think uh gene simmons always maybe except from the elder he always had a good costume i think i think he should have um, toned it down a bit it's a bit too much gore I mean, too much over the top. You, you, the 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 armor almost moves by itself. You know, it's it, it doesn't seem like a part of him like the other costumes. I, I think it, it's 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 a uh, well, it's not his best hour, but uh, I still think it's look kind of cool uh, compared to uh, some of the others. Uh, and uh, I mean, if someone is going to be over the top, it works well for Gene. I mean. It's mm-hmm. the type of character he, he is on stage, so uh, I think I think it's pretty cool still. But but it, it was in the last place for for me. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of it at all. You know, and there are several variations. Again, we're only going for the the major ones. Yeah. Uh, you can nitpick through a whole linear history of their costuming, uh, but we're only going with these big ones. I think in terms of integrating his aura color into his costume. His was the most effective of the four uh, with the red cape. I mean, and that is really, you know, the Superman thing again, superhero, Clark Kent, Gene Simmons, absolutely perfect uh, from that perspective. But again, nothing about that costume, even like the, the gargoyle structure that existed under it, any of those unworkable kind of concepts work for me in any way. Mark. Yeah, I didn't, particularly like this one either i mean the one that's in the picture that i held up it looks better than the one that i keep thinking back to because there's a uh, concert that's floating around from that time i guess one of the only real full concerts from that time period uh and the costume that he had there looked a little bit more basic from this one like the cape he looked like had that he was wearing then looked like it was just like some translucent like very thin red cape that mm-hmm. this one looks much more thicker and longer than the one that's he he wore in concert and the and the breast thing that he had, it looked like somebody brought into like a welding factory, stuck him underneath a big huge pot of soldering iron material and dumped it on him and it just formed into this huge like silver mass on top of him. It looked very odd. That's how they did make it actually. Mark. Oh really? Eh? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and the boots I always thought were kind of odd. Like when he did that kind of you know the weird kind of uh, like dinosaur feet thing i mean there is one variation of the costume where he wore actual boots for it but i think that was you know a very short period of time when he when he wore that uh and yeah i i, I just never really took to this costume it, it just kind of looked very slapdash to me it didn't have the same sort of 
you know, it didn't have that same effect where I would look at the costume and want to like look at it in great detail. This one's kind of like, Ugh, there's nothing really to see on it, in my opinion. But I do understand a nine-year-old kid kid going to a concert and seeing those capes, oh, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. go in the wind. Sure. I mean, uh, they yeah. must have yeah. been blown away. But uh, ah, wasn't his best moment. No, no. seven-year-olds are easily impressed anyway. Or yeah, yeah. Yes. they That's used true. they used to be. So, so am I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, now nowadays they just swipe left or right or whatever it is. All right. So yeah. the most our this panel's most popular. Or their favorite costume, uh, which scored 18 out of a possible 20. So everyone agreed except for Daniel, uh, was mm -hmm. the 1976 armor and studs costume. Daniel, let's start with you. It wasn't your favorite. Um, your favorite was the 1975 version, which again was studs, but a, more of a leather top, which kind of yeah. com combined 76 with 74 mm -hmm. more. Um, what was it that made you? you know, love that one the most. Uh, the leather stud from 75, I think it was more, it felt like his, he was a bit more mobile in that one. And uh, uh, I think he looked uh, meaner. He still had a lot of leather combined with the spikes and the spikes looked really, uh, yeah, they looked like sharp and you were almost afraid he would, you know, hurt himself with those spikes because they were all over the place and they looked real. <laughs> what I felt with the 76 costume, which was more of a armor, I felt he was going for a bit more Marvel comic on that one and he lost touch uh, a bit with, with the leather black. Uh, to, to, I, I, I missed the black in the costume. I mean, it's, it's like an armor. I, I felt... I, I thought it should have had a bit more, even though we had the bat wings was kind of cool when it, when he had those, but, <clears throat> but I, 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 I'd, I'll take the leather stud from 75 over this one, because I think that looked, it looked real mean. If you look at those concerts from Detroit, uh, when he sings do's, I mean, uh, he scares me to this day almost. I mean, he looks real mean. So uh, that would be my favorite. Mark, you and Ken and I all went with the armor. Um, yeah. What do you like about it so much? Well, I mean, I remember the very first time I saw that armor, I was like v highly impressed. I mean, it looked very like professional. Like to me, all the costumes before that looked like they were, you know, semi-professional and then semi kind of like, you know, in the backstage with a needle and thread at some point, you know, doing some of it. Whereas I found that this one looks like it was the first fully, you know, money invested into the costume and those boots i mean come on those dragon boots that he got yeah, done you know those, th those things were like a, a six steps up from any boots that he had before and i mean the, the costume fit him really nicely i mean in years later when he w wore it for the psycho circus you, you could see how ill fit it kind of fit him then but here it, it really made him look like a you know big strong demon and i also think too that at that time period he did his makeup really good. I think everything was kind of falling mm -hmm. in place for him at that time. And I think that it was, uh, you know, one hand shakes the other kind of thing with this. The costume really looked good. The boots really looked good. The, the makeup really looked good. I think this was a very strong period for them, you know, coming off of Alive and the record doing so well. I mean, they were riding a high probably. So uh, it kind of showed in all facets, I think. Yeah. So he, he was really fit. He was a six foot hot look, non American man. So there you go. Um, Ken. Yeah, I, I ranked it number one. Yeah, for a lot of the same reasons. Um, it, it looked very cool. Um, you know, uh, armor, you had to go into the battle, you know, with the armor and that sort of stuff. And um, though I almost I almost put the 77 costume, you know, before I, I was I was like wavering between those two costumes, but uh. Yeah, I ended up going with the armor. I always thought it would look cool, especially back then. I agree with Mark, though. Later on, some of the uh, other uh, versions of armor, just something was wrong about it. I don't know if it was the design or, like you said, the fit of it. It, it just you know, it wasn't the same. Um, so, yeah, going back then, it, it was a very cool thing. And, yeah, I agree with the boots. That was just a major step up. Um, 
I mean, I have a half a shell of one of the, you know, mm-hmm. boot of a boot cover, but and those are just it was just so cool <laughs> to see that. I guess I would combine the the leather stud costume with those boots. That would have been perfect because the yeah. the boots he had in '75 looked plain silly. You know, he he painted some sort of um fangs uh, like spikes. on his boots and it it looks spikes, it, yeah. it doesn't look good. Mm. Yeah, so I kind of thought, you know, well, in 1996 when they did the Alive Worldwide tour, they came back and Mm -hmm. they tried to get the biggest and best from the 70s. But I thought, yeah, yeah, by doing that, and he didn't look right then. So it hadn't aged well, or he didn't. The two two didn't recombine well. Um, So it was more like a Ouija board with all these. It's like, I'm going to, you know, it could be Mm -hmm. any of them. Uh, the yeah. costumes, really, but for me, just the the armor and boots work so well <laughs> together on that costume that it really feels like the real deal. There aren't elements that I dislike in any way where I can nitpick, you know, seventy seven. I can nitpick the the, the puffy horns in seventy four. <laughs> uh, you know, little elements that I can, but there there's so little, so much less to nitpick. For the rest of these jean costumes, we we kind of um, had a clear winner in that one. Uh, Second place was the 1975 leather stud one that Daniel, uh, you know, everything you said, I I, I just agree with, you know, so um, I'm not going to even rehash that. And followed by the chain demon, I called it, in 1977. Um, And then, of course, the least favorites are Jean's original-ish. 74 road warrior followed by Still the, cool. the, followed by vegas yeah and they're all cool and they're mm. all you know for kiss fans they denote the, the time period to a non-fan they don't mean anything they're, they're timeless to, but to us they're an indication sometimes and uh, i guess when the the history of the costumes right down to all the minutiae about when elements added into the pictures is going to be very interesting if that uh, you know, becomes available for fans to read, to follow the trail of the development of their costumes. That's just the sort of geeky stuff that I really enjoy. All right, why don't we move on to Paul Stanley. Um, <clears throat> least favorite on nine, scored a whole nine points. And uh, it, no surprise, again, it's the Disney, the Dis, Disney. The Disney Vegas flamingo Disney. look, I called it. Um, yeah. I, I ranked this dead last. Ken and Daniel both had it second from last. And Mark, you actually quite like this. Yeah. Um, I didn't really mind this costume, to be quite honest. Uh, you, you know, I mean, what I liked about this costume, period, was that they tried to incorporate the color more into their costumes, right? Like, I really liked how Peter had the green fur on his stuff and Ace had the blue pretty present on his. And I think that's Paul... the wrong color. Yeah, but I mean, I, I just like the, the concept of the colors that they had on there, you know? It should be purple. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's sort of a purple, but it's not the right shade of purple, right? But I, I just thought that, the, you know, the, the pieces that were on there were pretty interesting. I always liked that kind of star piece that he has in the middle there, like that, that belt piece. And, you know, I, I just think that overall, in this time period, if I was to pick the, the costumes I liked the best from this era, I think Paul and Aces were the ones that were really the standout ones out of those two. And, you know, the, the advantage of Paul's is that he can also, dis, you know, take off pieces yeah. of it and, he, you know, he can go bare chested within two or three songs. So really, his costume is really not that big an issue if you think about it, right? I mean, he comes out. You know, Rasmataz is the 10 year old kids for two or three songs with the purple, and then he takes the coat off, and bam, he's back to regular Paul Stanley again. Yeah, he shouldn't be wearing his talisman on his belt and wasting his superpowers in such a way. Um, yeah. Just, well, the laser eye didn't work, so he had to do something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Ba- backup plan. My, my, my Paul Stanley throwing star. Daniel, your thoughts on Vegas, Paul? Uh, well,. If you read about how much money they spent on those costumes, mm. uh, I think they should have been able to put something cooler on. But 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 to me, the color is one of the main things I don't why I don't like it because to me it's not 
purple to me it's more of a pinkish kind of color i'm not sure if i'm colorblind or something but but to me it looks pink and I, I felt you had the perfect title for this costume disney vegas flamingo because i mean it's like he has small <laughs> flamingo feathers on his leotard if you look closely and it just looks plain sailor to me but paul can wear almost anything and it still looks you know like that flamboyant uh, leader ring leader uh, so 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 he, he, he as mark said the best thing with a costume is that he can you know put it off pull it off and um, just go it. adjust it and and, and uh, take it off skip, take it off exactly <laughs> so that's the best part but, but to me this this isn't one of his better costumes he he went uh, too far and too much vegas and he does indeed look like a vegas flamingo and that's mm-hmm. no good with his shades of deep purple outfit. There you go. Ken. Yeah, I mean, he had the jacket or whatever, the, or someone said, oh, hey, hey, there's a nice shower curtain. Let's make the jacket for Paul Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so, oh gosh. But, you know, yeah, fortunately, he gets rid of it real quick after the beginning of the concert. He, he loses it, and he looks pretty much like the regular, you know, Paul Stanley, the jumpsuit guy in the thing, you know, yeah, bare-chested thing um, that he had. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I didn't like the jacket. That was, that's just the worst part of it. Um, but the rest, I mean, the color, I, 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 I agree with Mark, though, as far as incorporating the colors from the solo albums. I think was you know a good idea, but they just kind of went a little overboard on some of it, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's okay. Otherwise, but yeah, I think that was probably down near the bottom of my list too. Yeah, don't you mean it's all right rather than it's okay? It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should maybe we should move on. Um, Sites. So for for the for the rest of. The costumes it's really again not too surprising that our favorite this panel's favorite was uh, Paul's 1977 I called it the sequined master of ceremonies outfit um, Ken and Daniel both ranked this as their favorite Mark is not a fan of this and I'm middle of the road so Mark justify yourself um. Well, I mean, again, it, when I saw this costume in comparison to some of the other ones, I mean, it, it, there's nothing wrong with the costume. I'm just comparing to some of the other ones that Paul had. Whenever I think back to some of the first time I saw some of these videos from those time periods, this one kind of just, you know, didn't really strike me as much as the other ones. I mean, I, I always thought that, you know, the, the Dynasty one had a like a first impression right away. The, the alive one even seemed, you know, th- what th- that time period was so uh, important for me because it was one of the first bootleg videos I ever got was a Detroit Kobo 76 there. And I everything about it is just burnt into my memory. But, you know, the, I don't know, the, this this costume just didn't really have much going on, in my opinion. I mean, the heat, that whole, I didn't like that whole feathers thing that he had on his forearms there you know it, it it it's just a little fruity i find in spots this costume it's just not it just doesn't do it for me this costume and i mean i don't i never really like the chains there too and stuff i mean it's not a bad costume like don't get me wrong but it's just not the one that i think of when i think of paul stanley to be quite honest yeah, all that was missing was a mirror ball top hat. <laughs> who, who had one of those? Uh, There's some of the performer in the 70s that had that that shtick. Um, whatever. Oh, the hoople? Uh, yeah, may have been, or Naughty Holder had uh, <laughs> yeah. a, a, kind of a different one. Um, Daniel, this is your favorite. Yeah, uh, when I think about this costume, I, I see uh, Paul Stanley belling, uh, belting out I Stole Your Love from the Alive 2 or Love Gun uh, tours. And it's just the quintessential Paul Stanley to me. Uh, I like the, the the vest much better than the super, the wonder bra he had on, on the Creatures tour. 
And uh, I liked Jacket, the first one. I think he had two. He had one that was seen in the Phantom of the Park with a lot of stars. It's lo- it looked kind of mm-hmm. silly. But the first one, it's just rhinestones and, and uh, it's like... S- when he goes on stage with that one and the lights hit him, it, it looks so cool. And I do love the boots. I think it's his best boots ever. I think I've read somewhere that, I'm not sure if it's correct, but uh, that it was uh, supposed to be Gene's boots in the beginning. But he, he, he decided to use the ones from the previous tour, but I'm not sure if that's correct. But it could have been, because I think they look kind of mean and I like the chains and they look real and uh, i think it's a per- and the leotard is is great as well uh, and he is of course in in his prime uh, when it comes to performing jumping around and and the guitar f- works perfectly with that costume you know the black yeah ibanez so uh, to me this is number one um but i didn't like the feathers either but but when i think of it i don't think he used them very much it, to me, it was more on, on the uh, Alive tour or uh, when he used those on, on his forearms and it didn't look good. But uh, this one is brilliant. Yeah, those are, seem to be a little bit of a holdover from, you know, what was it, the uh, Ali- end of the Alive and uh, Destroyer tour where he had like the jacket with the, the fringe, yeah. the feather boa fringe and all that. Mm, so. Yeah. Uh, the boots, great point on that. That it, that really does nail it for me. Uh, Ken, your thoughts? Yeah, well, he actually used the feathers for you know tickling the girls, you know, after the show. That's what he had. Before. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, I rank this one number one. Uh, I think it's great. Uh, the jacket was you know cool. Um, then he had that you know, what it was like. Uh, a vest, I guess you'd yeah. call it, Daniel, right? Uh, which was sequined and, and stuff. That was really, you know, worked really well with the whole outfit. And I always loved the chains on the boots. I thought that was always very cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, that the stars going up the leg. He has, of course, the garter going on the other side, which was <laughs> other leg, which was an interesting touch to it. Um, but uh, otherwise, yeah, that's... I like that one the best. I think it is his best all-around uh, costume up until maybe the end of the road tour, you know, which we're not going over that, but I really think the end of the road tour is his probably best costume since that costume back in 77. That's a really good point. Yeah, th- thank you for making that. Yeah, yeah that's so- the clip I'm thinking, you know, that Mark shows. I think he sh- isn't that I stole your love, I think so. Yeah. Man, cool. that looks cool. The whole, cool. the whole band does. I mean, come on. Yeah, that, it's that, uh, yeah. That, that is kind of the image. So, you know, with Paul, that wasn't my favorite. You know, mine is the star boot, you know, the unitard kind of latter part of the Alive tour um, mm. before they kind of invested money in an outrageous costume. But it's not, you know, I'm middle of the road on all of it, you know, and it's the same yeah. for the rest of the costumes that didn't win this panel's voting. I mean, 10 so points right for... Yeah, 10 points for 74, 13 points for the sequined unitard with feathers from 76, and then 14 for the uh, unitard that I like the most. So um, not surprising again. So let's move on to Peter Chris, Catman, and least favorite. No shock again, <laughs> the Disney Vegas fluffy, fluffy cat. So uh, Fluffy the Green Kitten did not win much love um who is that mark you actually gave this the most points out of us you're you're i think you're muted oh sorry yeah sorry about that um the reason why i like this one actually is because again i think it has a strong impression of the color and also because they're trying to go for that whole you know cat you know the wild cat look and all that fur that they have on them i mean in essence it's a very unusable costume as far as live goes because i mean if memory serves me correctly he comes up backstage on the dynasty tour with it on and within five seconds it's already half off of him when he gets behind the drum kit right because i mean it makes sense i mean could you imagine trying to play 
drums with that on your shoulders. I mean, the thing starts <laughs> yeah. falling off and Can't landing reach. on your snare drum, and you know, all of a sudden he'd be probably blowing a gasket halfway through a song, right? So, but I, I think as far as for photo shoots and for stuff like that, I think that Peter, at this point, and even like when they did the reunion, I think that he had some pretty very nice uh, like photos that he did as far as his costuming because even when he did the the program for the alive 1996 97 tour they had that shot of him on that throne in the middle of the jungle what he was i mean so they always kind of tried to get his persona to be like you know this this wild animal kind of guy you know and i thought that they did a pretty good you know attempt at it with this costume i, I mean yeah sure it's not a costume that you can use for a live performance but i think as far as promoting the album and stuff like that i always thought it was a pretty strong costume it doesn't look fruity like paul's kind of can look and it doesn't look you know ridiculous sometimes like how jeans can look but i i think that for for this kind of period and what he's trying to what they're trying to show i think it does a pretty decent job in my opinion i mean you can disagree yeah i'm oh, sure yeah. someone <laughs> someone's going to uh not ken though i mean he didn't rank it rock bottom yeah, I ranked it second to last, I think. Um, it was low. I, you know, it was it was again, it was cool at the time. Uh, yeah, like Mark said, the the those heads that that were on his shoulders, and all that fluffy stuff that was hanging from his legs, uh, pretty, you know, not not usable in concert uh, at all, unless you can you know take the head off and throw it at somebody otherwise. But. Um, <laughs> uh it, it, it was okay it's 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 not my favorite uh the colors again it's fine again a lot of those costumes from the dynasty time are better with when they're stripped down you know without the capes and maybe if they used a little bit less color it might have looked a lot better more if they would have kept it like daniel likes it silver and black someone all to take up those costumes and Try to do some coloring, still, you know, silver and black, and see what they look like. Be interesting. Those were their street costumes, their Sunday finest versions. <laughs> Just too over the top. Daniel, you were with me, and we ranked this, you know, the the worst. So, your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's kind of hard to rate Peter's costumes because, to me, he only has one. He he looked real cool in, and that's the vested bandolier, or however you pronounce that one. Uh, because whenever I think of Peter Chris uh, from the Dynasty era, I think of that green big cape, <clears throat> you know, with like colored animal tails hanging everywhere, and it's like a it looks so fake to me because there's no animal with that green color and tail, so it's like a bad coloring job on fake. A fake tale from a fake... I don't, I'm not sure what to say about that one because it's uh, to me it's uh, it's uh, outrageous how, how silly looks when he has that one on. Um, dead animals all over him. Uh, and, you know, trying to make Peel into the dangerous jungle cat of the jungle, it's not possible. I mean, with that makeup, that was the first mistake. I mean, I'm the demon, I'm the star child. I'm going to be a kitten. I mean, it's hard to do anything with that. So, um, but I still think he pulled it off when he had that vest with those uh, silver bullet belts uh, mm -hmm. that looked real cool. But other than that, I'm not too sure if he ever had anything that I liked. Uh, I didn't even like the the unitard, you know, with the, um, I think it was the Destroyer era. I, I guess some people might like that one, but to and me, it era. looked like yeah. Yeah, the air, it looked like arrows pointing at, you know, his junk. <laughs> it looked <Okay>. kind of <laughs> so silly. So, yeah. so to me, it's the vested bandolier all the way. Yeah, instructions for where to find the spoiler. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not a <laughs> fan good. of uh, Peter Chris's catnip costume uh, at all. Um, just over the top. But again, with Peter, as everyone, you know, particularly Daniel has says, his costumes are so difficult because he really discarded a lot of the components and, you know, for the sake of being able to drum comfortably. So it was over the top. But my biggest, I think, problem with the 
the dynasty costumes is that they really weren't used well like in the album you, you only see their faces and inside you had like the laser effect logo on the yeah. back of even the inner dust sleeve you didn't get a photo of the band in those costumes so it seemed like an awful lot of effort to go for just a few photo shoots here and there um you know just a complete waste yeah. of money and maybe that's indicative of some of the issues that were affecting the band at the time daniel you uh, went straight to the only unanimous pick on this uh, panel's rankings was Peter's vested bandolier, and those are, of course, the X-shaped uh, kind of mm -hmm. gun cartridge things from the the West. Seventy-seven. And, yeah, the seventy-seven. And again, he didn't wear those when drumming usually, uh, but with his wrist guards, his belts, those that look yeah. is just belts perfection. It's not over the top. It kind of is fashion. In, in a way, but that that I didn't even have to think about for myself. Daniel, you, that was your favorite pick as well. Yeah, to me, it's the 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 perfect Peter Chris costume, um, and I think in second place I would pick some of Eric Singer's, if that was possible. Some of his uh, vest that, that that he designed lately. I think those look better than all the rest of the Peter Chris costumes. Yeah, Eric's actually had some very cool costumes during his time yeah. wearing the makeup as well. Ken, you, again, we all agreed on the top pick. What do you like so much about it? Yeah, the yeah, the like uh, Daniel said, the the bullet kind of vest, uh, or you know, the cross, the belts. I guess you would call them, you know, bandolier. You're calling it, um, and the. The belt around, yeah, the belt's around his waist, and all that's going on 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 the on the pants, and I believe what was the boots? I think the boots were were probably some of his better boots that he had, you know. That he, and usually, you know, he doesn't wear those in concert, right? Because he can't <laughs> use those while you know hitting the pedal. So um, it's again, it's that '77 era is pretty special for me because that's when I got into the band and so uh, it was very cool it, it's just the first thing that I saw in a lot of pictures at the time when I was getting into them but yeah I think it's the best one for him for all his costumes Mark, and thank you for the efforts you're going to showing us photos during this. It means I'm not going to have to do yeah. any editing after the fact. <laughs> so you're saving me time and energy. Uh, what are your thoughts on this costume? Um, I agree with everybody. I think it is definitely his best costume. I think that uh, it, it, it really shows the kind of image that I think he wants to project of himself without being too over the top. I also think that his hair was kind of cool at this time when he kind of had like that salt and pepper thing going on with it. And it's a bit longer as well at this time period. I, I think it, it really um, showed a, a very good uh, impress, like a good uh, image of what, what he wants. I think his makeup is really good in this too, how he does it in here. And uh, I've always admired the fact that he had no problems showing his whole uh, love of God with the crosses on his wristbands yeah. and stuff like that. And he always wore the crucifix necklace and stuff like that. I mean, they, and they incorporated, I mean, how many, you know, band managers do you think would say, okay, you know what, he's into that. So let's incorporate that into his, his costume. Because if you take a look at the bottom on his belt there too, sorry, I should get this in there. Uh, he even has them on his belt. Yeah. Right, those crosses, the forearms. Uh, yeah, the, so I mean, it's it's everywhere there, and you know, and again, we got to also remember this is this is the time period when they were all in their prime. I mean, he he's probably in his best shape at this time as well, I guess. In as far as you know how he looks, and uh, yeah, I, I think that it's it's very cool. I I mean, even the neck the neck collar thing, I think it looks pretty cool on them. I think it's definitely definitely his strongest uh, costume that he that he wore for sure. Yeah, one of those neck things called chokers, I think. Chokers, yeah. Choker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so for Peter, again, it was a uh, clear-cut winner, clear-cut loser, and the other three costumes, the 74 Leather Road Warrior, the Unitard Cat Jack. I didn't make these very speakable. Um, 
and then 1976, the sequined unitard with, uh, let me expand it, with cross. Um, and of course, Ozzy also wore a cross, didn't he? So uh, there you go. All right, moving on. Last but certainly not least is Ace Freely. And he's got six options attached to him because, of course, he's the ace. And um, he did change his costume a little bit more substantially in mid-74, um, incorporating the triangle thing which then became the sources thing. and uh, Well, we'll get into it. All right, our least favorite Ace Freely one again. No surprise, Dynasty. And um, who was it? Dave Hill from Slade. It looked like he'd taken parts of Dave's 1973 costume and recycled it for Ace's use. But what the heck is that thing anyway? I mean, what is it supposed to be? Uh, is he like, like Space Tortoise with a half shell? And the belt, yeah. underwear belt, I mean, fail, complete fail. I liked it better with, uh, you see some pictures of him in 79, I believe, without the shell top, just like the belt and the um, the leotard thing, and mm -hmm. he, he looks pretty cool. Um, and I think the boots are okay, but for me, that thing is a total donkey costume. Um, Mark! Imagine this. You actually quite like it. Yeah, you like, again, it, you I like it the most of us. Yeah, I mean, it's not near the top. I mean, I think it's in the middle for me. But uh, I again, I, I didn't mind the whole uh, look of it. I mean, I, I think, that, again, they, they incorporated his color into it. Uh, I always thought that those kind of... Uh, the, the cape really looked uh, most over the top out of all of them. But I mean, I guess if you think about it, he, 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 they wanted that look. They wanted everything to be over the top. You know, they, that, that was their whole thing. You know, the super kiss, you know, it was 1979, right? And uh, it, like to me, I think out of everybody's costume, when I look at it, his looks like the most, like best fitting on him out of all of them. You know what I mean? Like everything looks like it fits perfectly on him. You know, it all helps too that he's like a very thin guy, so you know you can you can design anything kind of tight fitting on him, and it looks looks like it it'll work on him. I mean, even those kind of like uh, things that are on his arms and stuff like that, they all kind of look like they fit nicely on there. And that you know, who knows? I mean, at this time he was talking about Jendel a lot and stuff like that, so maybe he was trying to incorporate some sort of sci-fi look to his thing as well. You know, maybe those maybe those little uh, mirrored round things on his chest piece are supposed to like reflect light into the audience who knows right maybe that was his idea when he thought of it right but yeah i, I always thought that it was his marriage of jendel and uh you know whatever other idea they tried to incorporate from his previous costumes because that'd be as a holdover obviously from some of the earlier stuff right might be you caught me googling thanks <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, you and Ken ranked it the same. Uh, what did you think of it? Uh, I think uh, when you look at 79, 80, I think this is one of the better costumes. Um, I think the colorful costumes um, suited Ace better than the others because um, he was supposed to be like the spaceman the outlandish guy uh, and he was kind of he was kind of out there at this point in time i mean if you watch like the tom snyder show and so on uh, so i think it suits him quite well uh, the other thing is uh, i like the broken mirrors or the pieces of mirrors uh, over his uh, vest because if you look at some of the live shows that are available it looks really cool under the lights and uh, at times he got rid of the cat cape and that i think that then he had a real good look uh, comparatively speaking because uh, this was probably their worst costumes but i think he got away with it uh, i think it's, it's kind of cool and i think he's he himself has said at times that this is his favorite costume so uh, it's all right yeah that's a <laughs> mark is showing a picture from the tom snyder show classic so uh, I think he has a whole lot of worse. He looked worse in a few others, but I have to give a shout out to the leather road warrior, the the original. I think that's one of the coolest. He had it down 
from the get-go. If you remember the lightning bolt across the chest, uh, mm -hmm. cool lightning on his boots. Some similarities with the Elder costume, which I kind of like as well. And it looked fantastic on Tom Thayer, actually. So, uh, shout out to the Leather Road Warrior from 74. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I mean, in, in terms of its vision and everything, that was just perfection straight up, um, that original costume. Ken, uh, you also had this middle of the road. Middle of the road on my list. Yeah, I, it's a good costume. Um, yeah, I do like the mirrors on there. I believe that middle thing used to light up or was supposed to light up in the middle. That that little center piece um, was supposed to light, <laughs> you know, come on as a light or something like that. But his, uh, his Iron Man button. It's the <laughs> Iron Man. Yeah, so it keeps him going. And it has so a it space gun to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, oh, yeah, you've seen those pictures. He has like a space gun or something, and it really, like it appears like he's in a spaceship or something, but uh, <laughs> like Star Trek or something like that. But um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a good costume, and yeah, they've kept that theme going, that V shape uh, up to today. You know, where you know Tommy, it, Tommy's is very similar today to that. It, in size, I think, in shape, and shape, and it has that centerpiece in there, like the original. So um, it's very, very close. So it, that's what's funny about it is it's almost the same. They just did some, you know, you know, color changes, more silver and black, uh, which I think would have worked well on, on that costume. Uh, though, of course, yeah, they incorporated the colors from the solo album. So it, it, you know, it's a good album. I mean, not a good album, but a, a good costume, and uh, you know, it's it's not his best, but it's not the worst one for for him. Yeah, that, that belt underwear looks like a sumo wrestler's uh, wrap or, or something sumo. from something from the Blue Lagoon movie inspired. I actually, you know, funnily enough, I, I don't like it because of its size and bulk, but I do think Tommy's looks quite good. Um, so there yeah. you go strange okay. strange yeah. things all right so that was our least favorite this panel's favorite one um pretty pretty clear well no it's not a clear one but we'll talk about that is uh the 1976 space linebacker outfit that he had going so mark cue up a photo of that if you would please <laughs> Yeah, for yeah. me, that I, I don't, and I would love to see a KISS panel come up with some accurate, worthwhile names for these costume components. I like these, <laughs> what the heck do you call these things? I mean, I, I, I wear a t-shirt, and that's as complex as my clothing design gets, so I just don't know what to call them. But that outfit for this panel scored 18 points. So, yeah, that's a good... Um, let's see, who had it as their favorite, or least favorite? Six points went to Ken. You had it as your favorite. I had that one as my favorite uh, Ace costume. I just thought that I don't know. It, to me, it exhibited uh, the right kind of space theme. I don't know why that that outfit makes me think of you know Saturn, <laughs> you know the planet Saturn and stuff like that. It's just it just seems like a real space outfit that you'd see maybe in a, a movie, a space movie, a, you know, the future kind of thing, and they're wearing something like that. It just seemed the perfect space, you know, design of a costume. Uh, uh, you know, you know it's, it's not like too extreme, too much, not huge, but they had the little flaps you know, on the shoulders and, and, and so on. And, you know, it had that V pattern, but, uh, yeah, I just thought that was cool. And the boots are, were very cool on it too. Um, thought those were really good, good type uh, boot that went with it. So I like it. I think it's the best one for Ace. Yeah, Dan, you also ranked it highly. Yeah, it's a good costume. Uh, I had it in third place, uh, but uh, I think nice shoulder pads, cool boots, a bit messy with the rhinestones. I think. Yeah. Well, oh, that's front, the V-shape. Uh, I prefer the one he had in 
uh, on the following tour, you know, the uh, Moon Boot Alien, as Julian called him. Uh, mm. It was a good name. Uh, it's a bit more streamlined, uh, a lot of silver, a lot of black. Uh, I really don't care for, for the, the rhinestones on the V. You can't really make out what it is unless you see a photo of it. I think it has some, like a planet. Uh, it's supposed to be the, stars. Uh, yeah, stars and stuff. In the distance. Uh, yeah. yeah, so, but it's a hell of a costume. Yeah, I think the uh, the, the, the rhinestone stars are supposed to catch the light and kind of... Yeah, yeah, you know, which yeah. the other one, the the moon alien one from seventy seven, would not really have done. It would have been more reflective. So both of those, like designs, they work well. They're more wraps. They're not too bulky. The little wings are cool. I didn't rank it that highly, um, just because there are other ones that I like more. So I had, I think I ranked this the lowest of us all for mm -hmm. for a favorite. Um, just because there are other ones that I like a lot more. And my favorite will always be Ace with that little triangle top from late 74, kind of the hot. Yeah, of the that's hell. my favorite too. Yeah. You know, that one. I, I, I do, I do <laughs> like that. Um, and a, again, for some of my criticisms of the other costumes, you know, art is in the eye of the beholder. That belt, which is on backwards there, uh, sometimes you wore it the other way around. Um, also quite liked his hotter than hell photo shoot costume, just the silver <laughs> kimono. So go figure. Mark, um you actually had this uh the second highest uh ranking, so what do you like about it? Well, I I thought the destroyer one was pretty strong. You know, it had a lot of good elements in it. Uh all the things that you guys mentioned, I think I would, you know, second as far as that goes. Um you know, you know, it's it's definitely Ace is one of those guys where, you know, he he doesn't he doesn't uh, have costumes look bad on him very often. I mean, usually most things fit well on him, and the the thing that he has going for him is that the costumes seem to not hinder his playing of the guitar. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like whenever you see him on stage, he can wear most of his costume, if not all of it. And still get away with playing his guitar the way Ace freely plays his guitar. You know, and Peter Chris can't do that with his costumes. A lot of times they have to be modified. Paul gets fed up with a lot of his stuff and starts taking it off throughout the show. And same with Gene's even been seen a couple times uh, more famously in the more, you know, reunion era times where he would start playing something and then he would start shaking his arm and the roadie would come out and take off one of the pieces of his bat wing off because he was getting pissed off that it was getting in his way. So... I guess Ace's costume has always had the benefit of being the most uh, easiest to do his live show with. And I thought that that's a, an important part of the whole thing. I, I've always loved that kind of look that he has in this costume. But I'm with Julian, though. I, I think that my favorite Ace costume has got to be that Triangle 74 one. And I'll tell you, mainly because my favorite video and era of a Kiss was that Winterland Cost, uh, concert that I saw than the black and white one and that every time I see that video I just see a very you know hungry band that wanted to you know rule the world and Ace was at his top of his game I thought at, at that point like a lot of his playing and his solos were amazing at that time period and this costume is what I think of when I think of that time period obviously because it's so connected with that time it's so interesting. I had it in last place. Uh, I guess art is in the eye of the beholder because to me it always looked like uh, the dumbest kid in sixth grade uh, hurrying through a project in needlework and doing something in paper mache. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, I can see how you think that. Yeah. Paper mache, yeah. That's what I was thinking too, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, I mean, you would have loved the Twinterland concert if it was the Leather Road Warrior as well. I think with the lightning all across that one. That's oh, yeah. real cool. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I mean yeah. No, no, de no denying it. I mean, that Winterland costume. I mean, some of the other costumes that kind of uh, stand out are, you know, kind of the get-ups that they had for that Hotter Than Hell shoes. You know, Aces had a costume yeah. with a, a interesting bells, that silver thing. I, I, I know Andy made a replica of it and wore that uh, on the cruise one year. 
um, really cool getup. But I think Gene's costume from that, which had his seventy-four little puffy bat wing or demon horns, yeah. with that 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 Roman yeah. Uh, yeah. armor with the with yeah. the, the studs, was a missed opportunity that could have been used. Or maybe it just wasn't comfortable. But I thought that was a really cool costume. Yeah. Um, and Mark is you... showing the Elder costume now, and I think he, he went full circle with that one. It's really reminiscent of, of the um, the first Leather Robe Warrior. Yeah, yeah, it is. That that's a, I, you know I I love that costume actually. I was thrilled when they yeah. came back. I would love for Kiss on the cruise to you know if he's only going to wear it for one show, for Gene to come out wearing that hotter than hell get up, or maybe Tommy wearing that ace get up mm. from the photo shoot, or Eric coming out wearing. I mean, what did uh, Peter Schott wore a cravat and like a, a, a red velvet jacket, you know, a, a cigar lounge jacket. Um, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And well. You know, then Paul could wear his current stuff because he was like, not wearing very much at all that day. So those those are some cool stuff. But but just finishing up with Ace to wrap up this episode, you know, it was a very tight fought battle between um, the winning one, the 1976 Space Linebacker, and the 1977 Moon Boot. Just a point difference between them, and then everything else is kind of pretty. Well, it was a tie between. Um, the unitard Saturn pits, as I called it, just those little circular things over the arms and the leather road warrior. And then the, the triangle top did get some love from, uh, well, Mark and myself, as we both mm -hmm. said. So, you know, there's a lot of good costumes. The question for all of you out there is what are your favorite costumes for each character or each person, since we never called them the demon, the cat, the star child, and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, in the original era, which was your least favorite and why, you know, so wherever you listen or watch the show, do chime in on some of your favorites and maybe some of the other elements from the obscure differences, you know, when Paul wore a different pair of boots for a while or where, you know, different costumes were kind of introduced for a while, but then rapidly changed. And yeah, we haven't talked about the creatures um, or elder. elder. Or yeah. unmasked the the minor yeah. Ha differences yeah. that happened there because Eric we kept Carr, it. Too. Yeah, yeah, we kept it strictly to that. And there was a great reference site um, on Kiss Fan Shop, uh, the German website that I kind of used as the basis to go through these um, different costumes. But you can check it out. I would love to see a proper site done just mm -hmm. dedicated to the costumes by someone who actually knows what they're talking about rather than Mr. Unitard, uh, moon boot alien. <laughs> that's, be that's the best I could come up with. So I think before, you did a good job. Well, before we go, I'm just going to yeah. wrap up the, the final scores for each one of the, uh, band members, Gene mm -hmm. on 18 points. One, uh, and winning was the armored studs followed by the leather stud of 75, the chain demon of 1977, the Leather Road Warrior of 74, and in last place for him, of course, the Disney Vegas Gargoyle. For Paul Stanley, the winner was the Sequin MC from 77, followed by the 1975 Unitard Star Boot, followed by the sequined Unitard with Feather from 76, um, and then the Leather Road Warrior of 74, and least favorite Dynasty. Peter Chris. Um, 1977 leather vested bandolier on 20 points, followed by sequined unitard with cross from 76 on 12 points, unitard cat jacket from 75 on 11, and then 10 points for the road warrior and Vegas. Eh, bleh. And finally, Ace Freely, 18 points for the space linebacker, followed by 70 points for the 77 moon boot alien, followed by. 15 points for Unitar Triangle Top that Mark and I liked. And we had a tie between the Road Warrior and the Saturn Pits. And then, of course, Vegas Last. So there you are. There's the wrap-up for the panel on how we voted. Oh, and number ones. All, all my number one picks were number one. Where are they? Hmm. All so, you, so you're... You, all you, so the voice of reason approves of this episode of and course. doesn't think I, that Mr. I, Gill I, skewed the I math in any way. Awesome. <laughs> well, since Ken approves, we will leave it there. Thank you for joining us. Um, do please comment wherever you are. 
uh, about what you thought about these costumes. Let us know what we missed, uh, you know, because there's always some nice detail that you guys can add to the conversation. But for now, from Ken, from Daniel, from Mark and myself, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on the Kiss FAQ Podcast. Thank you for spending time listening to the Kiss FAQ Podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.